So this is just a, a quick finish off of the custom ISOs. I thought I'd just finish it off now that I've actually got them working. Let's show you how I did that. Okay, so I'm going to get logged into my server where I did this. Let's CD to user source release. And this is just where I'm going to do everything. So the first thing I did was to have a quick look at release.conf. And I changed a few bits. So I changed the source branch. And that's pretty much all I did. I've tried it with various options, um, which I'm not going to really go into just now. But what I did was was quickly have a look at the uh, try that again. So what I did was I quickly had a look at the release.sh. And it actually tells you what I was missing. So there we go. The release.conf is setting up the build environment by variables. So what I did was, I just did release.sh minus c user source uh, release release.conf and then memstick and that was pretty much the only command I did I'm going to run it now just so that you can see that it's going to go off and do its thing if I remember rightly I also put a name of the ISO but it didn't actually do anything so I'm going to leave that off and just run it from there there we go so what it's now doing is checking out the source for the OS and the ports getting ready there we go And off it will go. Now, I'm not going to sit here and do that because I know that it's already done that. So what it then does is if I look at my release.conf again and ch check out, yeah, look at my release.conf. And the other thing that I changed was where it's going to spit out all the output because by default, it spits it out to forward slash scratch. Now, I changed that because... My root disk is actually quite small, so I changed it to a bigger disk. So use a home ISOs. So if we go in there, yeah, see, ch root de is there. So if we go in there, you'll see everything. Now the R directory, right down in the bottom left there, see that one? We change into there. This is where it outputs all the disks. So you've got a boot only ISO, a disk one ISO, and a mem stick. And you've also got an FTP and the checksums, of course. So if we go into the FTP, there we go, there's all the, the TXZ tables. This is for if, uh, if you're hosting it, I guess. I, I've not really looked into this too much and I'm not going to because it's not really that important to me so yeah there's my ISOs there are my 14.2 stable ISOs that I didn't actually need in the end but it's really quite simple let's just quickly go back into what it's doing and it's building that'll take a while depending on your CPU and memory configurations and disks, of course. It's getting on with it, which is nice. So yeah, just a quick one, really, just to just to show you that I did in fact get it done in the end. <laughs> and I can now use them to install FreeBSD, which is probably what I'll do. I'll test that out at some point. Because I haven't used those ISOs yet. For all I know, they might be corrupt and, and not work. 
I don't think that will be the case, but we'll try that in another video, I guess. If you do find it useful, please do give it a thumbs up. And, and if you don't, you can use the other button as well. That's absolutely fine. Don't forget to share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.